there. Hi, welcome to Curious Collection. I'm Will. I'm Cinnamon. So a couple weeks ago, we had dropped off um, some of our older inventory stuff that we've had kicking around for mm -hmm. at least a year, uh, stuff that was taking up space and stuff that we had a little bit of money into and just was not going to sell. It either didn't work with our business model, didn't work with eBay, didn't work for shipping. It's been um, sitting on the shelf too long and it was taking up too much headspace. Yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, we, we gathered all that stuff up and we took it to our local auction house. And if you are a, a longtime viewer, you saw some of those videos where we actually dropped the stuff and we went, went back on the auction day. So I wanted to talk about what exactly that experience was like. And now we got the check. <laughs> right, right. So we got paid. So I'm looking at our check and uh, we actually got two checks um, and we actually got paid. Um, so there, there was a bit of a, a mishap when we dropped the stuff off, which is why it's so important that you have that inventory log when you, mm. um, when you right. drop Right, as stuff. we're putting stuff out and putting our bidder or our um, seller number on it, we take an inventory and we keep a copy of that inventory and then we give the carbon copy or we keep the carbon copy and we give the original to the auction house so that everybody knows exactly what we brought um, so that, so that there is a, a written log, you know, so that when, when we got the check back, I was able to look at it and go, Oh, wait, you know, we missed this, that, or the other. So, right. right. So we actually dro dropped stuff off for an auction that happened on November 21st. And then we took another load because we had so much stuff that we just wanted to clear out of the way. Mm -hmm. We took stuff back again for the December 12th auction. So I've got the dollar amounts here. We had on the November auction, we did a hundred and, um, sorry, $314 in sales. The auction house has a tiered consignment schedule. So if it's a, uh, say a five or a $10 item, they take 50%. Mm -hmm. it, the higher it goes in value, the lower their, their percentage, cut, right. the lower their percentage. So auction houses do this because one, they want to be perceived as as being a um, a premium marketplace. Mm -hmm. They don't, don't want they don't want to be selling a bunch of you know discards, garbage, broken items, right? And then uh, so just just so that you know, so we did uh, three hundred and fourteen dollars. They took a hundred and twenty eight dollars in commission. And so that left us with a hundred and eighty-five dollar sale. Uh, the other on auction, items that we did not deem that we wanted them in our store any longer. Right, right. So that is one hundred percent. If we thought we could sell it on eBay, then or we if we have. had tried to sell it on eBay and we couldn't. That's the type of stuff we're talking about. We're not right. talking about taking our most choice items, sending them to the local auction house. We're talking about an opportunity for us. To clear out of, some inventory. Clear out the inventory. But instead of donating it to a thrift store, mm -hmm. we had the opportunity to monetize it for our business. Now, right. charity's great. Please don't misunderstand me. No, we, we donate to charity as well. But when it comes to our, our business items, our inventory, if there's any way, some people will have a garage sale. And that's awesome. If that's a way for you to get rid of some of the inventory that perhaps you're not able to, um, it's either not the quality that you want in your eBay store, or, you know, perhaps it's, it's, again, it's something that's been in your store for a year or more, and it's just not moving, and you're trying to speed up the sales of your, of your items. Right. So for our <laughs> December uh, auction, which is the one that we actually took video of for everyone mm -hmm. to see, if you recall, there was a bunch of, like, ornaments and some nativity scenes, and so some we're talking about shot and... glasses. We're talking about two weeks before Christmas. Uh, that sale did $157. The commission on that was almost 50%. It was $74.75 because, again, very low item, low value items. 
and and probably not the best timing with being two weeks before Christmas to try to sell Christmas items. Mm-hmm. But they weren't but we selling on them, eBay. Right. We, we wanted them, them on our store for as long as possible as well. If they had a chance to sell, we wanted to keep it in the store for, for longer. Um, but, you know, then, of course, you're running into the problem that they're not going to sell in person either. Right. So our total pay, payout on that was eighty two twenty five. So we're happy with that. Mm-hmm. Again, these are items that that we would have either had to throw away, try to sell at a yard sale or sell at or, you know, donate whatever. Um you know, I know people that uh, that they'll take their items and they'll take them to the flea market when they get down to the end of the mm-hmm. of the you know life of what that item is. And you know, this is something it it took us less than two hours. We loaded up the vehicle, yeah. we drove it over, unloaded the boxes, and turned in the sheet, and that was it. Mm-hmm. They handled the rest of it. They handled the you know the All actual the sale and... they brought the customers we yeah. didn't have to go and try to find the customers we didn't have to pay booth fees at a flea market uh we didn't have to price everything individually mm-hmm. and and put up yard sale signs we didn't have to stand out in the elements all day and if you are a live sales person that is awesome because we all have our jams i am not a live sales person. I feel like the energy that I have to give out is more than I have available in a day. Um, <laughs> you know, working with the customer live and in person and seeing a million people walk by the booth and not engage or, you know, trying to engage with someone and they look at our stuff and they're like, will you pay me a dollar to take it? There's only so much of that I can handle. So <laughs> I I just am not a live in person right, sales right. person. Yeah, we you know, and, and so one of the things that kind of brought us to this position of of taking our old inventory to an auction house is that we did try to do mm-hmm. one yard sale and I I had a bunch of I mean, I had probably forty or fifty banana boxes full of stuff that I had laid out and I made less than $50 in one day and, you know, people would get a handful of stuff and, and I, I was, everything's a dollar. Any, everything is $1. Will you take a quarter? No. <laughs> okay, then I don't want anything. Okay. So this is the game we're going to play is if you can't get something at 25% of the ask, which is only a dollar. Right. I mean, it's still cheaper than if you go to Dollar Tree mm-hmm. and, uh, is it really worth my energy? So for us, it's this worked very well. And so one of the things that actually we were talking about this morning is that there are some resellers who actually utilize the local auction market to sell as resellers. Mm-hmm. They completely yeah. skip over doing the yard sale stuff. They completely skip over doing eBay or any other online marketplace. Well, and and they mean, skip over the, the flea markets and they, they're they great at sourcing. Mm-hmm. So they go out and they source the item. Yeah. They're willing to pay the fees. And they Not just have to deal with any of right. like the, any of the anything. Right. You don't so have they to price it. Just you don't have to take pictures pick it up, of it. Drop it off. Yeah. So our auction house actually has a pickup service as well. Keep in mind, if that's something you're considering, they do charge Mm -hmm. and it is significant. So I would suggest drop it off yourself. And if, if this was something that you would consider, you know, pick it up, drop it off, make sure you got all of your stuff in line. And then, you know, we like to attend the auction that mm-hmm. that our stuff's in. You can't bid on your own items, but you can at least observe what's going on, ensure that you're being compensated accurately. Um, so who would this apply to is one of the things that I ask, is who would want to consign things through an auction house rather than try to sell it on eBay? Well, I know that there's a lot of, an older generation at our particular auction house and they either are kind of hoarders and they've, you know, had a lot of stuff. So lifetime collections (laughs) would be a great opportunity to liquidate quickly. I know that also like people who do storage lockers, 
a lot of times we'll see, you know, those types of items where maybe they do go through the storage locker and they get those choicest items. And yeah. those are the ones that they take to the live in-person sales, or those are the ones that they, that they list on eBay. But my goodness, the volume that you would have when you have those storage lockers is like, how do you get rid of that if you don't right. own a thrift store yourself? Right. And that's actually something that we've talked about. We've never attempted to do a, a storage locker no clean out mm -hmm. because, again, you're getting such a tremendous volume mm -hmm. of unknown items that who knows if it works in your niche? Who knows if it's something that you even want to deal with? It could yeah. be, um, you know, high end collectibles or a could be somebody's old clothes. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really not something that we've we've ventured into. But no. I could definitely see that if you were a reseller and that was your main Absolutely. sourcing opportunity, that here's an opportunity to recoup some of those costs or, you know, potentially monetize something that you would have been donating or, or discarding mm -hmm. normally. So I think uh, another person that could potentially do this, so house cleanouts. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're not a reseller. Maybe you just want to monetize some of the stuff that you're being compensated to remove from a property. We've talked to people that set up at flea markets. The one guy had six booths at a flea market at $20 a day. Yeah. I'm that's an incredible amount of money that he's investing into selling. He's working Monday through Friday, cleaning out properties and then spending his entire weekend trying to sell the junk that he cleaned out. Yeah. Whereas it, it may, and again, everybody's business model is different. So that's awesome. Um, we're just trying to give you some other ideas that maybe you haven't really thought of yet. Um, and this is something that we've discovered that works well for us. Um, but yeah, if you've got like that, that clean out business, I know one of my girlfriends, her, her husband does, does house clean outs and, and, you know, that type of a thing. And sometimes she does list things on, on eBay, but she doesn't have time. She's got a full-time job too, you know? So they're trying to get rid of just this plethora of stuff and, you know, and it is a great just dump and go type of situation so that you don't have to make a full-time job of getting rid of the stuff. They'll do it for you. You don't have to be there. You can literally just drop it off and they will mail you a check. Right, right. So you said dump. I want to be very clear. Yes. Don't dump Sorry. a bunch of garbage. At the <laughs> no, 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 no. They no. will not appreciate no, it. No, no. <laughs> Clearly, trash goes in trash. But yes. if you were doing cleanouts and you found some some better items, you know, this is a great opportunity to monetize that item very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, they write a check at our auction house at the beginning of the month. So you drop it off in July. You know that that at the beginning of the month of August, you'll get a check for, for everything of yours that they sold. So even mm -hmm. if you dropped off every week mm -hmm. throughout the prior month, they will still write you a check for that bulk in one check. Right. And everybody does their accounting differently. So your auction house might do weekly checks or they might do, you know, I don't know how they do it. So you'll have to, you'll have to discuss that with the auction house, but I'm sure that they'll be happy to describe exactly how the, the process works. I know that the people at our auction house are just awesome. We, we adore them. Um, and, and they've worked with us on so many different ways. Um, I mean, obviously we, we buy there a lot, but we've sold in, their higher end auctions, their online auctions. Um, and that's just, it's the similar process, um, you know, where you, you give them the items, but it may not go up that same week. So, because they only do their online auctions every month or two, the higher end auctions, um, you know, sometimes they'll do the, the online jewelry auctions or the online, you know, high end antique auctions. Right. So they, they do specialty auctions and they'll do the mm -hmm. online listings and, and their online listings are hosted on either proxy bid or high bid. And so that's a great opportunity to find some of those high end collectibles. Mm -hmm. They lot them together typically if they're lower value pieces. And so you have an, a chance to get a collection in one buy. And, you know, so that's 
it's it's a very similar listing process for them as mm -hmm. what we would do for put things on eBay right. or any other online market. Yeah, they have to put in the description and they take pictures and you know and all of that and then and then they do have um, sometimes it's both online and in person. And sometimes it's online only. So right, right. I know that there's a that there's a couple of you know different businesses that will assist you with your eBay, and they'll help you by creating listings or you know walk you through the process of you know selling your item. But at the end of the day, you're still responsible for shipping that item. You're still responsible for storing that item, and that's really the great thing that that in my opinion is. You know, I'm going to pay them for the service, mm -hmm. but I don't have to ship it out. No. I don't have to store it. I don't have to look at it. It's gone. Right. It's like a set it and forget it. Like, you know, I, I give it to her and, you know, I give her the information that I have about the item. If I have any information about the item, um, our auction house is also very good in that in that they do have appraisers yeah. and so that they do know the approximate they, value. Yeah, they typically know more than more than I do. Right. They've been in the industry for, you know, mm -hmm. 25 years. So. And a lot of those auction houses are going to be the same way. Absolutely. You know, those auctioneers, you don't you don't fall into this business if you don't love the business, you know, and and haven't seen a lot. So it's, yeah. it's nice to have that, that level of expertise that, you know, you're able to, to work with. You know, another person would be an estate. So a lot of these auction mm -hmm. houses are licensed to liquidate estates. So they'll come in and they'll either sign a contract with you. They'll remove the stuff from the property for you, or they can host the auction at your property or you can take the items to them and consign it just like we did with our stuff. Right. And, and just put it on the table or it's a legally like it's a, it's a legally viable way to liquidate an estate under court order. Mm -hmm. So there's, there are times that this happens. People are either medically incapacitated or, and they need to liquidate the estate for medical purposes or there are times when people pass away. Right. And, you've got to probate the will. So you've got to liquidate right. the assets so that you can, you know, move forward with that next step. Right. And honestly, like if that's the case and, and you're going through a, a grief process, how much easier can it be to just call the local auction house and be like, look, this is the situation. What's and they're they're very experienced in what they'll do. And what they do, and they'll be able to tell you, okay, well, in this situation, you know, if this is what you have, then why don't you just box it up and bring it to us and we'll put it out. Or, you know, conversely, they'll say, okay, well, it's a whole house full of items that you want. Go ahead and take the items that, that mean the most to you as the family, and then we'll just go ahead and take care of everything else. And at the end of the day, they will have the house cleaned out. So, I mean, it's it's really a great service if, especially, like I said, when you're grieving and things like that, you don't want to have to, I don't, I know that when my mom passed away, I couldn't go back into that house and see all of those memories. And it wasn't something that I was emotionally capable of dealing with. So to be able to call someone else and be like, please take this off of me, it was, it was, you know, it, it would be something that, that is a much more viable option in, in certain situations. Right. So as sellers, you know, we, we work with items daily. Mm -hmm. We're constantly listing, we're constantly sourcing, but we're, most of us aren't just looking for random things in a house. As an example, you know, your kitchen supplies, right? There might be a couple of great kitchen gadgets, you know, that KitchenAid mixer or, some you knives. know, a, a nice coffee maker or a knife set th that might have some value. But, you know, your spatulas, your ladles, your spoons, your pans, most of that stuff isn't really high value. But, you know, from what we found, we took a tray of, uh, of household stuff over there, the, the kitchen ladles and spoons and stuff like that. And they sold it. Mm -hmm. They sold it. They monetized it. We got a check at the end of the month. We didn't yeah. have to deal with it. I mean, not something that we would have been able to sell on eBay as a mixed lot. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody would pay the shipping. Right. Let's, be, let's be clear. You can go to you know any low value store 
and pick up a spatula. You you don't need uh, a high, you know, they're not high end spatulas. No, no. <laughs> so um, I did want to kind of just peek in here and, and kind of give you an idea about what some of the items were that we dropped off. Uh, there was a set of glasses that we had. They were some Pilsners. They didn't sell on eBay. Heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, these were branded towards different bars or different beers. And they sold for $20. The auction house took half. Again, it was sitting in our inventory. It yeah. didn't sell. Um, if you know what to expect when you go into this type of situation, it can make it much easier. Right. We're not upset about giving up 50%. And the reality no. is, if you... We've talked about it in the past with our, our buying method for eBay. We look at what the total sale price would be, including shipping. Mm -hmm. We take out 25% as our buy cost. So if you think about 25% of that total cost on a, in a me medium or low value item is going to go to eBay fees. 25% approximately is going to end up going to shipping. And then we take the other 25% difference for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So 50% goes to shipping and eBay fees. For us to give up 50% on the set of glasses and we don't have to ship it, we don't have to store it, we don't have to list it, that's a great deal for us. We, got our, we got our cut. Mm -hmm. You know, if we had, you know, $5 into it, we just made $5 profit. Yeah. And I promise we didn't have $5 into a set of glasses because no. it's not something that we typically sell. Uh, a flat of playing cards. There was probably eight decks of playing cards. This is something that had they done, you know, had it sold on eBay would have probably done much better for us. But a lot of these were, you know, either open or again, they've been in our inventory for one, two, three years even yeah. and didn't sell. Right. So the flat of playing cards sold for $8. So a dollar a pack, we got 50 cents on the dollar. So again, we only got $4 on eight decks of cards. That seems like very low. And if you're a seller and you heard that, oh, well, I can go and buy eight decks of cards for $8. That's a great opportunity if, if you can sell it. Mm -hmm. We couldn't sell it. We couldn't figure it no, out. No, but also like a lot of these times, a lot of these items, we will buy an entire lot, right? Or we'll buy a box and we will take those choicest items. And those are the ones that we've already sold. We've already made our money back. So then there's these other items that came with it. And those items didn't sell. Well, that's okay. Cause we've already made our money back. You know, we've already gotten our margins. So a lot of these items are things that we're, we're good. It's already been worked into our margins. This is genuinely just the cost of doing business. We have items that we know we're not going to sell. Right. So another item, and I'll make this the last one, but another item was that we had a jewelry box. We purchased it. It had some some nice pieces of jewelry in it, but it also had some some junk, some some lower value, maybe one to three dollar pieces, mm -hmm. stuff that we don't sell. And so we we went, we bought it. I think we probably paid around. 40. I think we paid sixty on that okay. one in particular. Um, it had a Juliana bracelet in it and one of the earrings, but the other earring I had already bought in a different lot. Um, so I bought this $60 jewelry box. I know for a fact, I can remember it had the Juliana bracelet in it. I sold the Juliana set for $200. So I also know that this jewelry box had several other really nice pieces that I have also sold for, you know, 20 to $40 each. So I was able to take this jewelry box. I made bank off of it. I did really well on the jewelry box. I'm super, super pleased. Do I want an actual box, jewelry box in my house? No, I don't. So I was able to take that box, the big bulky jewelry box, fill it with jewelry that doesn't quite fit my um, quality line that I put into our store. I typically don't put anything in our store that I wouldn't expect someone to pay $20 for, because I know if you're going to buy something online and you, you've got to work in the shipping cost and the eBay fees and, and everything, then it's, if it's under $20, it's just not worth it for my customers or for us. So 
again, it's not that it's garbage. It just doesn't fit my quality to put on eBay. So right. yeah, there's these. These are great. The stuff that's in that jewelry box that we sold uh, would be great items to sell at a flea market Absolutely. for again one to three dollars. And there's plenty of people that attend these local auctions that, that like are, to do that. that that like to do that, or they like to buy them for themselves. And, you know, they don't care if they donate or throw away the, the mm-hmm. contents, the stuff that they're not interested in. Right. So. If you're a crafter, like there's there's a lot of options for some of the, the lower quality jewelry, you know, like the paparazzi stuff. Right. I'm not saying that. And again, I'm not getting into that. I'm just saying that mm-hmm. there are lower quality jewelry pieces that can you can still find value in. But I can't list it on eBay. So back to the jewelry box. Uh, We bought it for $60. She made multiple item sales out of it for hundreds of dollars. Mm -hmm. We took that jewelry box with the remaining contents, took them back to the auction house to be sold again. It sold for $30. They took $10.50 as their commission because, again, it's more valuable. They took a lower commission. We got $19.50. So our total input cost on that jewelry box, once you balance it all out, was $40. Mm -hmm. So, again, $40 turns into hundreds. Right. And we're not stuck with stuff that we can't deal with. Exactly. I'm still getting paid on. So, like, I I feel like it's it's such a win-win situation for us, you know, where we get to buy all of this awesome product pick the choicest items, sell those on eBay and still have an outlet for those items that maybe we don't, you know, that don't have that same, um, you know, resale value that, that we would want to put into our store. Right. So uh, thank you for stopping in. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just wanted to update everyone and kind of give you a feel of, of what does it look like and, and how does this work? And, you know, like I said, I'm very excited you know, we got two different checks totaling close to three hundred dollars. Yeah, um, I, I think a hundred, two hundred and sixty or something. We can buy a lot of inventory with that much money, and mm-hmm. we can turn those items that weren't going to sell into something that is, you know, hand selected, hand picked, or you know, yeah. buy another collection and sort it out and take those choicest pieces, get them online, and and not be burdened down with a pile of stuff like what's sitting behind me. Yeah. So that's our whole process. Um, we did have those other two videos. So if you want to go back, um, I'll have him put that in the uh, in the comments Great. down below <laughs> so that you can see the drop off. You can see the actual sale. And then now is, you know, where, where we got paid off for for those items. So I hope right. you enjoyed the process. Um, and, and I hope that it opened up your eyes that that there's other options out there for you. All right. Thanks. Please like and subscribe.